Will NASA's Sunbeam Drive soon be taking us to distant star systems? Due to the vast distances that prevail in space, the dream of interstellar travel seemed like an unfillable wish for a long time. But now experts have developed a revolutionary concept that should finally make the leap to distant worlds a reality. And while the double star Alpha Centauri, which is only 4.34 light years away, seems unreachable with our current means, the new propulsion technology could bring a probe to it in just 40 years. A formidable challenge, a simple approach. Because at first glance, the background to the new Sunbeam Drive seems quite simple. As we all know, gas stations in space are in short supply. But what if we gave a spacecraft a component that supplies it with the necessary propulsion energy from the outside during its journey? Well, that is exactly what the new NASA concept envisages. The spacecraft will not carry its fuel at all. Instead, it will be supported by an external platform that provides the energy supply via a particle beam. Why this particular form of propulsion could achieve the decisive breakthrough in the field of interstellar travel becomes clear to us when we consider the incredible speed increases that are possible with this method. Recently, the probe, Parker Solar Probe, became the fastest man-made object of all time when it approached the Sun at a mind-boggling speed of 692,000 kilometers per hour. An undoubtedly impressive feature, but it pales into insignificance when we remember that the speed of light is estimated to be around 1.08 billion kilometers per hour, and that with Sunbeam, it's possible to accelerate a probe to 10% of this universal maximum speed. In other words, the spacecraft could race through space at a good 100 million kilometers per hour. But how is that even possible? Well, the answer to this question is called relativistic electron beams. And the electrons accelerated to almost the speed of light generate enough power to propel even a 1,000 kilogram probe across interstellar distances. And once this approach is realized, the Alpha Centauri star system, 4.34 light years away, is no longer tens of thousands of travel years away, but only four decades. This is particularly interesting from a research perspective, because Alpha Centauri, together with the star Proxima Centauri, which is closest to the Sun, forms a super triple system that may even harbor a habitable planet, Proxima b. How interstellar travel could become a reality. At first glance, 4.34 light years may not sound like very much, but to get a sense of the vast distances in the cosmos, it's worth looking at the following example. As is well known, no other man-made objects have ever traveled as far into space as the two Voyager probes. Expressed in numbers, this means that since their launch in 1977, Voyager 1 and 2 have put a whopping 24.81 and 20.74 billion kilometers between them and the Sun. And that's not even a single light day. And just to be clear, Despite their advanced age, the old-timers are by no means chugging through space at a leisurely pace. They are traveling at around 61,000 kilometers per hour. And yet, compared to 100 million kilometers per hour, Voyager speed seems more like a snail's pace. But how does the Sunbeam technology actually work in detail? Well, the centerpiece of the propulsion system is the so-called Solar Staten, a stationary platform that is placed near the Sun. It floats in place using light pressure and solar magnetic fields, while firing the high-energy electron beam at the probe, protected by a massive solar shield. As soon as the focused electron beam hits the probe, it transfers the momentum, thus continuously accelerating the spacecraft without relying on its own fuel. The longer the beam acts on the probe, the greater the speed boost. But shouldn't the electrons eventually disperse into the vastness of space? Fortunately, they don't. While electrons usually repel each other, they exhibit remarkable behavior when accelerated to relativistic speeds, or in other words, speeds approaching the speed of light. More specifically, this is a phenomenon known to experts as the pinch effect, which is based on what is known as time dilation. In very simplified terms, this phenomenon states that moving clocks run slower, and when applied to sunbeam technology, it means that approaching the speed of light prevents the electrons from drifting apart, and the beam remains stable and focused even over enormous distances. The Advantages Over Breakthrough Starshot and Company 
The dream of interstellar travel is not new. And in fact, the idea of accelerating a spaceship to high speeds using an external beam is not a recent one either. Launched in 2016 with the participation of astronomical greats such as Stephen Hawking and Freeman Dyson, the Breakthrough Starshot Research Project is also based on a spacecraft that receives its energy boost from outside. But while Sunbeam, as already mentioned, is supposed to catapult a 1,000-kilo spacecraft to interstellar worlds, Breakthrough Starshot relies on a veritable midget. More specifically, this concept envisions a few grams heavy probe the size of a microchip, equipped with a light sail and powered by a laser. However, this would require not just one, but an enormous array of powerful lasers that combine to form a 100 gigawatt beam and target the mini probe sail at a distance of 20 million kilometers. The Sunbeam approach sounds much more tempting. After all, it would finally enable us to send a fully-fledged research probe to the Alpha Centauri system and to check at close quarters whether Proxima b really does live up to its reputation as a potential world for life. Although the exoplanet probably always turns the same side to its red dwarf and is consequently divided into an icy night side and a hot day side, there could be a narrow twilight zone between these two extreme zones that harbors liquid water. And if, and this is still a big if, given all the unanswered parameters, life has already blossomed on Proxima b, and this is detected by an interstellar spacecraft, this would undoubtedly be the greatest astronomical sensation in history. So what are NASA experts waiting for? Well, as is so often the case, there are still a few hurdles to overcome. While the Sunbeam concept sounds equally simple and promising on paper, the real-life implementation still holds some demanding challenges. The Hurdles to Realization in particular, the problem of energy supply should be mentioned here. For the relativistic electron beam to be able to accelerate the probe at all, it must, of course, first be generated. But that's not all by a long shot. After all, the high energy beam must then also be precisely aligned with the probe over stellar distances. Even the tiniest deviation would cause the beam to miss the spacecraft, bringing the mission to a premature end. Furthermore, the beam requires more and more energy to remain effective over increasing distances. And since the solar state it is to be stationed near the sun, as mentioned, it would need materials that can withstand the intense heat and radiation of our mother star. Fortunately, and this is the exciting part, the achievements of the past have shown that the many foundations of revolutionary propulsion technology already exist. Just look at the Large Hadron Collider at CERN which can generate beams with a higher energy than is even required for Sunbeam. In the same breath, the beam guidance systems of modern particle accelerators can also pave the way for precise targeting in space. And if we then remember the current speed record holder, Parker Solar Probe, we realize that there are already space probes whose materials can survive the rendezvous with the sun unscathed. When it comes to the question of how to actually generate energy, the experts have a sophisticated solution up their sleeves, namely thermoelectric generators that convert the tremendous heat near the sun into electricity. The small but all the more crucial limitation here, however, is the fact that so far, there is simply no technology that would allow the cosmic solar power plants to be realized. So, it will take time before the corresponding technology is developed, and the same applies to the overarching sunbeam concept itself. So far, it only exists on paper, and even the most optimistic estimates believe that at least another 20 years will pass before the first Sunbeam prototype is launched. In addition to the technical implementation, however, there is also a completely different question to be clarified. Namely, who is going to finance the project at all? After all, the development of a completely new propulsion technology is likely to cost several billion dollars, and it's unlikely to say the least that NASA will shoulder these enormous costs alone. A more realistic approach would be for several space agencies to join forces and ideally bring financially strong private investors on board as well. As we can see, a little patience is still required before Sunbeam can be realized, but it's by no means impossible that we will still witness the launch of the first interstellar research probe. After all, who knows what breakthroughs will be achieved in other fields in the future 
that will benefit the Sunbeam Drive. And humanity has already proven time and again what rapid technological developments it is capable of. After the world's first powered aircraft took to the air on December 17, 1903, it took less than 70 years before Neil Armstrong became the first human to set foot on the moon's surface. And now you're welcome to click on the subscribe button. Press the thumbs up and click subscribe to never miss a new video from us again. We'll see you soon.